When Grant Mullen graduated from the University of Toronto Medical School, he knew nothing about mental health or the power of emotions to shape our lives. The emotional needs of his patients drove this doctor to enlarge his territory. And we've all been the recipients of his helpful insights. This is the second edition of Emotionally Free, a prescription for healing body, soul, and spirit. Is it not right on time? Dr. Mullen, thank you so much for making the time to be around this month because you're now all over the world. Yeah, it's great to be back. Just a treat. Now, <clears throat> I'm just wondering, we, uh, we read stats anywhere from 60 to 90% of doctor visits are tied directly to stress, our mental and emotional state. I don't know if you've nailed a number there. Or... Well, it's very hard to, to, to get exact statistics on something that sort of... Um hard to pin down, like there's no objective test for that. But there's no question that our emotions affect our physical health for certain. How many years ago did push come to shove for you as a medical doctor? When did you finally say, I I've got to learn more about what's really bothering these people? In mental health? Yeah. Oh, well, see, I started practice in 83, and by 85, I was just swamped with Christian, well, anyone coming to see me with mental health problems, but primarily Christians, because I was a Christian doctor, I attracted a Christian clientele. And so all these Christians were coming to see me with mental and emotional and even spiritual problems. And I kept saying, what are you doing in my office? Shouldn't you be talking to someone in your faith community? Mm -hmm. And they just said, well, some just said, well, I, I can't admit to having a problem in my faith community because we're all supposed to be walking in victory. Others said, I tried and they didn't know what to say to me. And one lady actually said, so I'm stuck with you. Oh dear. I bet she was glad after. Well, I was fairly inexperienced then, you, so you I'm not sure I was that much help. Into it. I, I had uh, an author recently describe our culture as distracted feeling, feeling, distracted, disoriented, dissipated, and despairing. Uh, we, we really need to, to go to this. But as you've said, we don't expect that this would be a definition of believers in Christ. That's right, but I, what I've found, just because I interviewed so many people, is that the level of struggle is almost universal. Like everyone's struggling with something, and some people are struggling a great deal, but it's under the radar, particularly in our churches, because we not all churches are safe places to be honest or transparent or to admit they have a problem. True. So I'm trying to help train churches when I do a, live a Transform Life seminar, to train churches, how do you move people from salvation to transformation? So my passion is how to live a transformed life. God wants us to be more than saved. He wants us to be saved and transformed by the renewing of our mind. So that's, that's why I wrote the book. How do we renew our mind? We've heard for quite a long time now that loneliness and depression are epidemic mm -hmm. in North America. Yes. And relationships are thinning out. Uh, do, do you make a connection there? Is, oh, it, yes. is it the distraction of our whole culture? Well, it's hard to put, like, there's so many factors, but to have good relationships, you have to have healthy emotions. And to have loneliness is a reflection of poor relationships or an isolation. And so if you, if you don't have healthy emotions, you're never going to have healthy relationships. And God wants us to, well, God gave us emotions to make us sticky so we would want to be in relationships. So he's very interested in helping us to have healthy emotions. He's given us so many tools to make our emotions healthy so we have great relationships and so we can break down the isolation that we live in. In the wake of so many catastrophic events, most recently the bombings uh, in Boston, there is a great cry. You know, there's much talk about gun control, but the other voice is, no, 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 the issue is mental health. So it, it, it's come to the fore, which is a good thing. Um, recent McLean's magazine, is she a brat or is she sick? Now this is just, uh, I'm, I'm citing this as one example. Uh, apparently if a child six to 12 years old has three or more tantrums a week for more than a year, <clears throat> that is gonna be called disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. And there are a whole list of new labels for everything from nail biting to grief. I, I'm not sure, and this is an area of great debate, uh, if this is the solution, finding new labels mm -hmm. for things, what is your experience in dealing with people who, who maybe want to camp in the, the validation of their emotions? Well, the, of course, the problem, why this is controversial is because we don't have an objective test for any of these conditions. Like, there's no blood test to, or x-ray to say whether or not you have this dysregulation or not. So it's always based on opinion and interview. So that's a built-in 
a subjective, I mean, it's a built-in controversy. But what you're saying is there are some people who can use a label to prevent, them, prevent themselves from addressing the real issue. So I see that particularly in, with the label burnout, actually. People who say they're burned out when really they have a de depressive disorder that they need to treat. But now what you're saying is that other people will say that they have um, you know, some kind of physical illness where really they have a psychological, emotional illness which they're avoiding by using this label. And so as long as they say, I have this label, they avoid the root issue. Okay, and here's a spin-off of that, that young people today are having, uh, showing up in hospitals and, and dying as a result of prescription drugs way ahead of street drugs. And that's mom and dad's cabinet that is contributing to that as much as anything. And, and, and it's tied, it's tied to all these labels well, that need medications that are becoming lethal. We gotta find another way to deal with our well, problems. What I'm trying to help people is identify what the problem is so then they'll know what the correct solution is. See, people who are just reaching for the drugs in their parents' cabinet, they're probably struggling with their mind or emotions, and they're looking for anything. So they'll find alcohol, marijuana, or whatever's in their parents' uh, painkillers cabinet. So it's, if we can identify what the real issue is, then what the real treatment is, then people can be set free. Well, Doctor, what do you think we can accomplish in our time with you this month? I'm just so excited. You used to be in this building, and then you were gone. You were just gone. And, and I, I'm just glad we've got the time. We've got a number of interviews coming up. Where do you think we can go? Well, my, my passion is, is how Christians can live a transformed life. And so I think the purpose of this whole month is to show Christians that they can be saved and transformed. Here are the steps to get there. God wants to heal us body, soul, and spirit. So we'll talk about depression disorders, which are the physical issues. We'll talk about spiritual issues and, and about our emotional baggage because we all have emotional baggage, which gives us our sense of struggle. And so if we can actually show people how to, do their, how to assess themselves, and then what to do about it, where to go for help, and how God wants to set them free in all three areas. Okay. You want to get a head start? You can do that right now, today, by getting your copy of Dr. Mullen's book, Emotionally Free, A Prescription for Healing Body, Soul, and Spirit. This is our gift to you this month for your financial support of the ministry. Isn't it great we get to do this? Thank you for making it possible with your prayers and your giving. Much more of the doctor in the house all of May.